All right, so we had some questions on inflation in our last class, so I figured I'd cover that in a video here. So what inflation is, is an increase in the cost of goods. So uh, if apples start costing more at the grocery store, we could, we could say that the price is, is inflating because the price is going up. So let's say you sell oranges over here, and two oranges you're selling for $1. Let's say I come up to you and I want to buy those oranges uh, with Monopoly money. How much Monopoly money would you charge me for those oranges? The answer is you're probably not going to accept my Monopoly money. You're probably going to want real money. But let's say maybe you make Monopoly games. And so you say, well, for like 10 wheelbarrows of Monopoly money, I will give you these two oranges, right? The idea is Monopoly money has no value because you can just print it, right? So you can't just go home and print some dollars. I mean, you could counterfeit them. That's illegal. But um, only the federal government can uh, issue these dollars, right? And if the federal federal government starts issuing a lot of it, um, like way too much of it, it could become like monopoly money. And that is what people are afraid of with inflation. Um, so if we look at this, let's say we print, we double all the dollars in circulation, right? So um, let's say, let's just make up a number. Let's say there were uh, 50 trillion dollars. That's probably too many, but let's just say that. And then let's say we print it to 100 trillion. Well, then two oranges are likely going to cost $2. So it's more complex than that, but that's a really um, easy way to think about it. If money supply doubles, inflation may double and your oranges may double in cost. And so we are seeing inflation occur um, right now. Uh, so that's kind of one of the problems. Uh, we saw this happen in Venezuela. So if I show you uh, these numbers right here. Uh, these aren't in dollars, these are actually bolivars, but uh, let's just use this for example. Let's say, oh, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's say in Venezuela in 1980, you could buy a bike for 100 bolivars. Uh, well, Venezuela started printing lots of, of money, right? Lots of bolivars. They printed so many, in fact, that today that same bicycle would cost you however much money that is in bolivars, right? So. Um, they essentially turn their currency into monopoly money because you can just they just print it right and if they need more they just print more and so um, in the US we're not uh, doing this bad right but some people are concerned about inflation and the way we measure inflation in the US is based on the consumer price index and uh, some people call this the CPI and what this is looking at is how much it costs you to live in the United States so we have the general cost of housing here we got food, you can see these, medical care, clothing, travel. It's a basket of goods, right, that the U.S. is tracking how much it costs the average American to live. And now there are issues. You can change how you measure consumer price index. We've done that a number of times. There are different ways you can manipulate the numbers. But, um, yeah, let's just roll with that, right? Let's say this house right here three years ago cost $300,000, right? Uh, housing prices are going up. So let's say it costs $500,000 now. So if you own this house, that would be a good thing, right? Because now you have your house is worth some more money. The problem is, is if you're renting or if you're trying to buy a house, you now have to come up with $500,000 instead of $300,000. And so uh, the increasing in the CPI can really hurt um, more poor people, especially if wages aren't increasing. Um, and inflation is a lot more complex than just money supply. If we look at the history of uh, inflation. This is in the U.S. here. So this is inflation rate. Let's highlight this. This is inflation rate right here. So here you see about 2% um, right around the 80s. I'm actually reading a book called Secrets of the Temple. It got up to around 10, 12%. This is not good for the economy typically. Um, but what we saw in the 70s was rising inflation. And there were a number of reasons for this. And there's always multiple reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is when the federal government keeps interest rates low, or I should say the Federal Reserve has r low interest rates. And these are complex, but essentially what it means is that it is cheap to borrow money. And so if you're a bank, you can borrow money for not very many, for not very much interest, right? And so then lots of people borrow money, which increases money supply, which then increases the inflation rate. There are more factors which we'll talk about. However, if we notice, uh, the inflation rate has been going down fairly consistently for a long time because we have quite a few deflationary pressures and there are a few things that cause deflation. One would be technology driving costs down. So if we go down here, um, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see if we can get both of these on the screen. There we go. 
So like I just said, technology tends to drive costs down. So if you are spending, um, technology can, you know, robots are generally cheaper than labor. And so if you can uh, make, uh, make goods cheaper, right, then that um, can make our costs go down and that can be a deflationary force. Uh, we also have cheap labor here, right? So China has been making lots of our goods. And if, you know, Nike only has to pay somebody in China $2 an hour versus somebody in the U.S. $15 an hour, um, that $2 an hour is going to cause deflation because, again, you don't have to pay that person as much money to work. Um, we have uh, money supply. So if the money supply goes down, so if there's less dollars available, um, this happens actually when the Federal Reserve, um, let's go right here, uh, increases interest rates. So right now, interest rates are low. I'm not sure what they're at. They're about 2%, let's say. Um, let's say they went up, like back in these days, they were going up to like 12%, right? Back in like this, like when we were trying to get inflation under control in the early 80s, they were like 8% or 12%, which means it was expensive to borrow money. Right now, it is very cheap to borrow money, which means money supply is going up a little bit. And actually, based on the uh, most recent CPI, came out uh, for April CPI, we were up here at 4%. And some people are starting to get a little bit worried about this because we're starting to see an inflationary trend. Now, the Fed says it's going to go back down, right? And inflation can be okay. Sometimes you want a low inflation. Deflation can be bad because if you go into a deflationary spiral, well, um, that can cause an economic collapse. Um, too much inflation. We see the Venezuela example. That's how inflation can be bad. So we're not really sure what's going to happen here because there's, again, lots of forces. So um, so that's the interest rates and money supply. Those affect um, inflation. Another thing about money supply, and we don't think about this, is in the U.S. we're in a different situation because we have what we call a reserve currency. So let's look at the whole world for a second here. And let's say... Um, let's say other countries are also printing more money, right? Like let's say China's printing money and so China's money value is going down. I don't exactly know if they're doing that. Um, and let's say India is doing the same and let's say all over the world, typically when countries aren't doing so well, they start to print money because that can help boost economic, um, well, the dollar value is going down. So supply is going up, right? Dollar value is going down. And in the US, we might do the same thing, right? So so dollar value is going down, but then supply is going up. And in the US, because the whole world uses our money, the money doesn't just stay here, right? And so if everybody else's dollar value is going down in their own, you know, whatever their currency is, um, they might actually want US dollars. And in that case, we see dollars leave the US out to the rest of the world, right? So dollars are leaving. And that means there's less supply, so we can actually turn the supply down in the U.S. So things are very complicated, especially when you're thinking on a global scale. So um, being a reserve currency, you can get away with a little bit more mon money printing if you want. So that's kind of a, a benefit to us. Um, another thing that causes inflation is wages going up. And we see this happening right now. So wages going up can be good for workers because they get paid more. But if you have to pay somebody more money to make something, you're going to have to charge more money for that thing. So it may balance out in the long run. It is hard to say. Um, we also see supply and demand impacting inflation. So right now, there is lots of demand for lumber, and there is a low supply of lumber, which means the cost of lumber is going to increase overall. Um, and so we also see that uh, you know more people are trying to buy houses, more people are trying to build houses. There's not much lumber, so then we see the price of housing going up. And this is what people worry about, is that you get into an inflationary cycle like we did in the 70s, you know, and then in order to get rid of this inflation, we need to cause deflation somehow. And if that means raising interest rates, that can maybe cause an economic depression or something like that. Um, we have one more reason for inflation and deflation, and that is money velocity. This one's kind of interesting. Um, so money velocity. So when money starts being spent in the economy, so the more people that are spending money around, we see money velocity increase. And this means there is more money traveling throughout the economic system, which means inflation may go up. And so this may be one of the reasons why we're seeing this 4% inflation is because people are getting back out into the economy out there, right? So um, there's that 4% inflation up there. So as people get out there, they spend more money. Um, another interesting thing is if people believe inflation is on its way, that can actually 
increase inflation more. Because let's say there's a gold necklace that you're interested in and it costs $300. You're concerned about inflation and tomorrow you're like, well, tomorrow that necklace is gonna be worth $400. Well, that means you better buy that necklace today, right? And so you buy it at $300. Well, what that does is then that increases money velocity, right? And then we can get to spiraling inflation. So, you know, nobody really knows what's happening. Uh, lots of, there's lots of good arguments for inflation, lots of good arguments for deflation. So uh, where we're going in the future is hard to say, uh, but what can you do? So if you are, um, you know, if we are going to an inflation situation, um, dollars are not gonna hold value for you, right? Because they're gonna actually go down in value, right? So if you have a dollar today, that buys two oranges. Well, tomorrow you might that dollar might only buy you one orange. So that's what inflation looks like, right? And it erodes the uh, wealth of people, right? Especially poor people. So poor people tend to not have very many assets or stocks and bonds and all these different things, right? Or investments, let's call them, right? Houses, gold, Bitcoin, you get the idea. And so poor people just generally have their money and if their wages aren't going up, Essentially, what is happening then is that they are making less and less money, right, when inflation occurs. On the flip side, if people are rich and they have assets, right, like they have a house and they have some stocks and some mutual funds and maybe some gold or silver or whatever it is, well, when there's more money, these assets tend to increase in value. And things are very complex, so it's not always that simple. But uh, that is one of the problems is that we see that increasing inflation um, tends to uh, increase inequality, I guess, wage inequality. So that's, uh, that is something that we want to watch out for, right? So sometimes spending all this money, printing all this money, if we don't need the economic stimulation, although who knows if we need it, I, don't, I can't decide. But uh, this increase in inflation can decrease the value of the money that the poor are working for, and it can increase the value of the rich, and that is one of the reasons, because we're spending so much money, that we see the um, economic inequality increasing. So not a great situation, but not terrible because we live in the U.S., so we're fairly fortunate. Uh, but there you go. That is a um, little intro to inflation. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, again, I'm not an expert. This isn't financial advice, but uh, I don't know exactly how to invest to hedge against inflation. I have some ideas, right? Like Bitcoin, gold, silver, these might work. But again, I'm not I'm a financial advisor, so don't listen to me. Um, this is not financial advice. Anyways, if you do have questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.